Quick Framework, a new VJS release, and official releases of Astro.js and Solid.js. My name is Ebenezer Don, a web software developer advocate, and this is JS Roundup. Today, I'm going to talk about the major news that happened in the world of JavaScript in July of 2021. I'll keep it short and to the point. Your time is limited, and I get it. Let's start. It's a new day and another JavaScript framework is out in the building. Oh, wait, this time around it's HTML. Yeah, the creator of Angular, Ms. Gohiveri, has released a new framework that's very different from Angular. It's HTML first and JavaScript last. There's also a framework called HTMX, which hit 4,000 stars on GitHub in July. There's news about Astro.js for shipping, less JavaScript, hotwire for more HTML. Are we entering into the era of HTML first? Remarks. I don't know, the web world is overwhelming and sometimes difficult to predict. A lot happened in July. There's news about AWS Infinitash, GitHub Copilot, Bulletproof React, Envelop for GraphQL, Cow.js, Alpine.js, and Vue 3.2.0 beta. Overwhelming, right? Well, I can only talk about a few. Let's get straight away. Now, let's talk about the release of Quick Framework, or what makes it different from the rest. So, here's this article that Quick's founder, Misko Hibari, wrote. A first look at Quick, the HTML first framework. By the way, we're going to be leaving a link to all mentioned resources in the description of this video. You know how websites are becoming slower as we add more and more JavaScript to them, but at the same time, we need JavaScript to provide rich interactions for our users. This is where Quick comes in, with the Quick Framework, or we can have just static HTML for super fast and efficient websites without sacrificing interactivity. Quick's resumeability makes this possible, as it can continue where the server left off, so you don't really have much code to execute on the client. It says here that the Quick Loader, which takes the static HTML generated from server-side rendering and resumes it, is less than 1 KB and will execute in under 1 millisecond. That's a really small amount of code and a very short time too. The best part is that this code will stay constant no matter how big your application becomes. Now I have to admit that I've not tried it out myself, but it does look really promising and I'll definitely give it a try. I know React 18 Alpha is kind of old news, but it's worth mentioning for our first episode. Why we wait for the main release of React 18? According to the React team, the Alpha version was published so that library authors can try it and provide feedback. They also set up a working group to provide support to the React community through the release. We've waited long enough for suspense, and with React 18, it's finally coming out with full support. <laughs> wait, did you catch the wordplay? waiting for suspense. <laughs> okay, jokes aside, I think this is really awesome. And in case you've not heard of suspense before, it's a way to tell React that you don't want to load a particular component until a certain condition has been met, like data fetching. Since not everyone uses React, we'll keep things high level. Uh, there's also a new root API that eases the React 18 upgrade process. You can check out the the plan for React 18 blog post for more information. And by the way, Cassidy Williams did a really good job of explaining the React 18 new features on the Netlify blog. Remember, links in the description. Have you heard of ESBuild? It's an extremely fast JavaScript bundler. It's been out for over a year and is currently on its version 0.12.16, which was released this month, July. From the official doc, the main goal of the ESB Bundler project is to bring about a new era of build tool performance and create an easy to use modern bundler along the way. Its major features are extreme speed without needing the cache, ES6 and CommonJS modules, tree shaking of ES6 modules, an API for JavaScript and Go, TypeScript and JSX syntax, source mask modifications, plugin. That's a really long list. Interestingly, ESBuild is already bundled with some frameworks like Hugo, a static site in Rito that's similar to Gatsby but written in Go. So you're probably using it without even knowing. 
To quickly test out ES Build, you can install it via npm with this command. And then Ubuntu, for example, a JSX file with a command that looks like this. You'll find more information in the Getting Started section of the ES Build documentation. Or what happens when you combine JSX, the flexibility of React, and the simple mental model of Svelte? <laughs> That's right, you get a reactive and virtual domless library named SolidJS. On June 28, SolidJS announced the official release of its version 1.0. According to Ryan Caniado, its creator, SolidJS has been in the works since August 21st, 2016, before finally getting to this staple 1.0 release. SolidJS looks very familiar to functional React, so if you've developed with React hooks before, you shouldn't have much of a problem getting used to the framework. Since SolidJS has no virtual DOM, you have complete control over what gets updated and when, even at the DOM binding level. So the framework never does more work than you want it to. Currently, SolidJS has close to 10,000 stars on GitHub, and that's a lot for a framework that's just one month old, well officially. So quickly get started with SolidJS on your local computer, you can run this command on your terminal. That will generate a new SolidJS app which you can then navigate to. Open up WebStorm, you get a prompt to install the packages, you click install, then head over to the npm section and double click run. For a more detailed overview, SolidJS has an extensive documentation and I can already tell that it's going to be a widely adopted framework. The first public beta for Astro was released in June and this July the version 0.18 was released. But what is Astro and what does it bring to the table? Well, Astro is not just another framework, it's a new kind of static builder that works with other popular frameworks like React, Felt, and Vue, but renders everything to static HTML. So you have the freedom of building interactive sites with JavaScript and some of your favorite frameworks, along with the ability to ship zero bytes of JavaScript by default. <laughs> now that sounds really interesting. But let's face it, you can't completely avoid JavaScript on the client side. So even with all of the default help that Astro has to offer, you still have to ship a JavaScript along with your static HTML. If you need interactive UI components running in the browser like an image carousel or a mobile sidebar open and close a button. <laughs> you see why this is the tricky phrase by default. Well, the good news is Astro still has a way to make a website super fast even with JavaScript and that's through partial hydration. With version 0.18, you don't just have partial hydration, you have responsive partial hydration. Partial hydration means that instead of hydrating all your components, Astro is only going to hydrate the individual components that require JavaScript, leaving the rest of your site as static HTML. And with responsive partial hydration, you can hydrate components with CSS media queries. Other updates that come with Astro 0.18 are name slots for supporting multiple component entry points inside of Astro components, SolidJS support, remember SolidJS, now you can use SolidJS components in Astro. There's also the lead support for using a lead SSR to get server-side rendering for web components. There's the style global support, GitHub syntax highlighting, and huh, a shiny new doc site. You'll find more information in the Astro 0.18 release page. Now for the quick bytes. AWS InfiniDash. InfiniDash is a new AWS service that brings to perfection that concept of data transmission that could not only provide reactive encryption to using several cipher multiplexers, but that could also be capable of automatically synchronizing hexadecimal transpilers. <laughs> Okay, that doesn't make any sense. I know. This explanation was given by Ellen Copes, the head of product at Tilt. And the gist is, AWS InfiniDash is an imaginary AWS service that solves about any problem. InfiniDash trained for a while on Tech Twitter in July. Look at this tweet by various devs on Twitter talking about InfiniDash. 
It all started with this one from Junash. I'm convinced that a small and dedicated group of Twitter devs could tweet hot takes about a completely made up AWS product. I don't know, AWS Infinite Dash or something, and it will appear as a requirement on job specs within a week. The first time I saw a tweet about Infinite Dash myself, I thought it was a real thing. But yeah, turned out to be a joke. The most popular AWS service in July. I wonder if they or anyone is going to ride on the hype and create an actual service named Infinite Dash. What do you think? A GitHub Copilot trended for two weeks in July. I remember tweeting about it during that period and saying, in two weeks, everyone will stop talking about GitHub Copilot. It's just one of those things. Yeah, tech to that didn't disappoint. But personally, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I don't think it's going to disrupt anything, certainly not taking anyone's job away. But do I like GitHub Copilot? I think it's cool and useful. There's been concerns about the legality and morality of using open source code to train the Copilot ML. So right now, I don't know what the future is going to be like for the tool. But let's watch and see how it goes. Vue 3.2.0 beta release. On July 16, Vue released a stable version 3.1.5 with script setup bug fixes and a beta 3.2.0 version with tons of features and performance improvements. While we wait for a stable version, you can view the change log for more detailed information. Finally, did you know that JavaScript is the most popular programming language? A JavaScript tops the language popularity charts in the State of Developer Ecosystem 2021 survey of nearly 32,000 developers with 69% usage and 39% when developers were asked to specify their primary programming language. If you've ever wondered whether you chose the right programming language to learn, this is a no validation. Now for our tweet of the month. Or which JavaScript framework will be the most popular by 2025? Out of 1,430 total votes, the React community won this poll with 49.1%. What do you think? Do you think it's going to be not invented yet? Or JS? One of the new frameworks we talked about today. Something else or still React? Let's have another poll in the comments section. And that's it for today's episode of JS Roundup. All links to the news mentioned are in the description box below. We'll see you next month. Bye.